to the Emmy Award-winning Daily Show. I'm Emmy Award winner Ronnie Chang. Please address me as such. We've got so much to talk about tonight. Donald Trump had a very busy weekend. Republicans want you to tone your rhetoric down, you bastards. And RFK Jr. is still doing RFK Jr. things. So let's get into today's headlines. Since Joe Biden dropped out for being old as shit, lots of people have been saying, what about Donald Trump? He's also an old man. But listen, Trump has energy, okay? Look how much he got done this weekend. He held a rally, he started a crypto company you definitely should put all your money into, and uh, he got in nine holes of golf. Well, well, five holes, that was a bit of an interruption. Tonight, the chilling new details of the apparent second assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Yo, again? <laughs> hey, will you people stop trying to assassinate Donald Trump? Not only is it morally wrong, but you're also just giving him more things to brag about. <laughs> they only tried to kill Abraham Lincoln once. That makes me twice as great as him. <laughs> but yes, this weekend, a crazy person tried to hunt Donald Trump in his natural habitat, his golf course. Investigators say a Secret Service agent monitoring the woods ahead of Mr. Trump as he played golf on Sunday saw a rifle barrel through the tree line and opened fire. The subject, who did not have line of sight to the former president, fled the scene. He did not fire or get off any shots at our agent. Cell phone records show he had been in place at the edge of the golf course for nearly 12 hours. This guy managed to walk into Trump's golf course and stay there undetected for 12 hours, okay? And I don't know if you've thought about this, uh, Trump, but maybe you should consider building, you know, like a wall. Like, I don't know if you're like a, maybe you're not a wall guy. Just, just think about it. But, by the way, have you noticed that the news reports are all like, a harrowing, near tragedy, sending chills through a nation? And meanwhile, everyone you actually know is like, Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Uh, I mean, we have to act like it's a big deal, but it doesn't really have the same impact of the first one, you know? It's kind of like Black Panther 2. You're like, yeah, I guess I'll see it. I mean, how is that gonna work? Uh, now, the Secret Service is getting a lot of heat for letting that guy get this far, but don't worry, they're taking action. As part of that increased focus on security, the Palm Beach County Sheriff now says that Mar-a-Lago behind me has the highest security level possible, equivalent to when Donald Trump was president. That's right, the highest security level possible. It goes security, maximum security, and then home alone level. I'm talking paint cans on the stairs, scary movies playing really loud, a cardboard cutout of Trump in the windows moving back and forth. And if things get really bad, Trump's scary old friend will show up uh, <laughs> and protect him. Now, the motive of the assassin remains unclear, so we'll have to look at who might have a reason to be angry at Donald Trump. On Sunday, three hours before the attempt on his life, Trump blared, I hate Taylor Swift on Truth Social, reacting to her bombshell endorsement of Kamala Harris. Ugh, Donald tweeting, I hate Taylor Swift. That's dangerous. I mean, I would, I would rather buy one of those Hezbollah pages than tweet, I hate Taylor Swift. <laughs> I, think, I think Trump needs to stick to racism. It's less divisive. But the... Assassin this weekend was probably not a Swifty, okay? He doesn't fit the MO. Swifties are non-violent. They prefer to cyber bully you until you kill yourself. So <laughs> why did this guy come for Trump? I mean, according to J.D. Vance, Trump's VP and the worst thing to happen to cat lady since feline AIDS, Democrats <laughs> made him do it. The left needs to tone down the rhetoric and needs to cut this crap out. We cannot tell the American people that one candidate is a fascist, and if he's elected, it is going to be the end of American democracy. Yeah, liberals, stop accurately describing Trump, okay? You're, <laughs> you're putting him in danger when you repeat the things he says verbatim. <laughs> But J.D. Vance has a point. The left needs to stop calling its political opponents fascists, okay? You don't see Donald Trump doing that all the time. She's a Marxist. She's a fascist. She's a Marxist, communist, fascist, socialist. We have a fascist person running. There's a radical left Marxist, communist, fascist. She's a Marxist, communist, fascist person. <laughs> what? Okay. That last one, it felt like he ran out of words to end in this. <laughs> She's a Marxist, communist, fascist, d d dermatologist. <laughs> I 
I mean, Trump has called Kamala fascist so much, I'm not sure he knows her name. It's, it's like when you say to a coworker, oh, hey, uh, hey, uh, yeah, good to see you, uh, my, my, my fascist buddy. <laughs> uh, don't forget the rules of slurs either, okay? You can use the word if you are one. That's why I can call someone else Ronnie, but you can't call me Ronnie, okay? That's our word. <laughs> But look, whether or not you think the rhetoric should be toned down, it's just not something that Trump and Vance actually believe in. I mean, for the past week, the city of Springfield has been overrun with bomb threats after Trump and Vance claimed that Haitian immigrants are eating everyone's cats and dogs, which there is no evidence of. I mean, people love posting photos of their food, okay? So we would have seen it by now. <laughs> but, but when Trump was asked about those bomb, bomb threats, he didn't seem too concerned. Do you denounce the bomb threats in Springfield, Ohio? Uh, I don't know what happened uh, with the uh, bomb threats. I know that it's been taken over by uh, illegal migrants. Yeah, the guy who wants everyone to believe he's super concerned about political violence can't even bring himself to say he's against bomb threats. I mean, what more information are you waiting for? It's a bomb threat. You need to know who the bomb was gonna vote for? I, I mean, I can't believe this guy is saying there are very fine bomb threats on both sides. You know, this, this isn't a trick question. This is a layup for politicians. It's like, do you support the troops or do you like Taylor Swift? Just say yes. <laughs> it's a layup. So will any of the heated rhetoric in this country change? Probably not. But there was at least one moment over the weekend that offered a glimmer of hope. President Biden tonight spoke on the phone with Trump. The White House describes the conversation as cordial, with Biden sharing his relief that the former president is safe, and then Trump thanking Biden for the call. Oh, yeah, Joe Biden. I forgot about that guy. <laughs> That's right, he's the president. It's so nice when two 80-year-old men can speak to each other on the last piece of technology they can truly understand. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. It would be great if we knew exactly what they talked about on that call. Well, luckily, we at The Daily Show got our hands on the very real audio recording. Hello? Hey, Donnie. It's me, President Joe... Uh... Biden? Ah, uh, that's it. Biden. My name's Joe Brandon. I just want to say I'm glad you're safe. Directing Secretary of Service, make sure Mayor Lago completely secure. Thank you, Joe. And let me just say, please come back. Huh? Please, Joe. This race is no fun without you. Everyone is shooting at me. This black lady keeps laughing at me in the debates. I need you back, Joe. We had good times together, didn't we? Of course we did, Donnie. Run guess she was the last thing in my life purpose. Nowadays, no one even pays attention to me. Just yesterday. I fell down flight of stairs. Jill just walked over me. Then tell everyone you're back in the race. You can call me a threat to democracy. I'll call you a demented head of an international crime family. It'll be like old times. Don't you think I want to? They won't let me. And she posted it outside my door and now a baseball bat. <laughs> Sorry, Donnie. I gotta go. <sighs> I gotta go too. J.D. Vance just called women walking embryo bags, so I got to deal with that. <laughs> Goodbye, Joe. Wait, Donnie, run away with me. What? We <laughs> meet at the old oak tree at uh, 5 o'clock. We drive to some small Latino country and run for president there. Oh, my God. Is this really happening? Are you serious, Joe? Uh, I'm as serious as a threat represent democracy to you are, old friend. <laughs> you half dead son of a bitch. You've made me the happiest man alive. I'm so happy for them.